G'day viewers, so I'm doing a tin roof install today and I thought I'd show you how to um, mark up your railing and everything for up on the roof. So the first thing I do is go up on the roof and I measure out where my panels are going to go and mark it all, which I'll show you in a minute on the roof. Um, but what I do is I get the panel width and then I add 20 millimetres for my bracket that goes, or my clamp that goes in between each panel. And then I times that by the number of panels and then I add a hundred millimeters because at the end of the panel, you should have your clamp and then another 30 millimeters uh, left over after the clamp. Um, because if you don't leave enough space after the clamp, what will happen is when you tighten the clamp here, it will actually spread the rail like that and um, the clamp can pop out. That's a damaged rail there. I've actually just noticed that quite a lot of this rail is damaged, which is disappointing. Uh, I didn't notice that when I picked it up. There's some more damage there. Uh, so that's a bit of a bummer. That could make it hard for me getting my clamps in on the roof. Um, so this is Clenergy rail. Uh, you should always read your manual um, which is relevant to your uh, rail type for installation instructions. Um, but once I've, um, once I've marked it all out on the roof, then I'll come down here and I write my measurements on my hand as I go. And then I'll come down and mark out all my rail. And so these are my cut lines and then I'll put the measurement and then it's for my row of seven panels. Um, so that'll be one full length of 4.6 plus 35.70, which is this piece here. And I'll do that for all of my rails when I cut them. So I'll come down on the floor here, cut them, and then I'll take them up on the roof. Some guys cut them up on the roof, either or, whatever works. Um, but um, once you've cut your rail, always make sure that you mark it so you don't get confused when you're up on the roof. Cutting your rail. Uh, some guys use different things. This is uh, specifically a metal saw with an aluminium blade on it. I've had that blade for ages. Um, they last a long time. If you use a regular circular saw with an aluminium blade, it actually damages the blade because the speed is too fast. Uh, so this is specifically for cutting metal. That's the model of it there. Great little saw, pretty light. But very noisy, extremely noisy. So um, make sure you wear those earmuffs or earplugs when you're using it. Right, I'm gonna cut these rails up then get back up on the roof. Okay, so I'm up on the roof and what I will always do when I first get up here is I will have a screenshot on my phone of the roof layout so that I can refer to what panels are going where. Then. I'll write on the ridge capping here, or somewhere on the roof, um, where the panels are going. So that means seven and seven. I've had to change these two. I had to take one off this side and put it on the other side. And I will mark my roof like that. There'll be a mark there, and there'll be a mark down there. Um, it's important to get your clamp zones right, so you need to know the length of your panel so that you allow for the clamps to go in the right spot on the panel because each panel has a clamp zone. So it's important to refer to your um, installation instructions for your solar panels so you clamp them in the correct spot. Um, otherwise you yeah, stand the chance of voiding your warranty on a solar panel, but that's a whole nother subject, the warranty on solar panels, which in many cases ain't worth shit, but I'll do another video on that sometime. Um, so I've marked out all my roof, I've, then I've gone down, I've cut my rails and I've marked them. Uh, so these are just all the cut lengths. And I've marked them there, so I know the measurement and it's for my row of seven. Um, so the rest of that row will just be, in this instance, one full length of 4.6. 
Um, so now I've got all my cut lengths as you can see. I just need to bring up my full length. All right, and then I'll use a rail splice to join them. Uh, where's the rail splice? There's a the rail splice. So that's the joiner for the rails. Okay, now your, your tin feet or your tin interface bracket, that's these bad boys here. So depending on where you are in the world, you need to refer to the installation instructions for the rail manufacturer. In those instructions, it will give you the, the spacings for your tin feet, so how far they can be apart. Now that's important because obviously different areas of the world have different wind um, categories. Uh, where I am in Perth, Western Australia, it's region A, and it's not too bad. We don't get tornadoes, we don't get hurricanes, we uh, very rarely get cyclones and very rarely get winds over 100 kilometers per hour or 60 miles per hour. So I just go by five screws apart. I know that that works for the region that I'm in. If I go six screws apart, it's um, pushing it. So I like to be uh, uh, well within the tolerances for the brackets. And the installation instructions will also tell you how far away you need to be from the ridge. And from the edge of the roof, so from the edge of the tin sheet there. Now this is a two-story home, so uh, you need to allow for the height of the building also, um, depending on how close you go into the edge of the roof, because obviously the wind can be a lot stronger towards the edge of the roof than what it is inside the middle of the roof. So um, I'm not gonna tell you exact measurements and so forth because it varies. Uh, for everywhere in the world. Australia alone has, oh, I think, three or four different wind regions. So even installing in Australia, you need to be aware of the, um, the different zonings and wind regions. I just know for me, I'll go five screws apart, 200 mil from the edges, and that will cover me for uh, all of my installations, whether it be single story or two story. Um, what else can I tell you that would help? Um, when you're on the roof, it's important, especially if you're doing it on your own like I am, there's 45 panels going up here. Um, can't say I'm too excited. It's pretty bloody hot here today. There's no breeze. Um, it's about 11 a.m. now, and I don't think I'll be here for that much longer. I'll get all the rails on and um, then I'll call it a day. But what you need to do is to try and conserve your energies to be up and down that ladder the least amount as possible. So bring everything, um, as much stuff up on the roof as you can so you're not up and down, up and down. And um, bring your, your rails up. I've got my rails piled up next to the ladder there. Uh, just there, so I'll carry them up in a bundle tie your ladders off like that both of them are tied off um, I've had a tradesman and an apprentice both do themselves pretty nasty injuries over the years through the bottom of the ladder sliding out and um, them getting their feet their legs sorry caught in between the ladder as it's fallen down so uh, especially if it's a wet surface make sure you tie that ladder off and uh, use these gutter guards as well. That will stop the ladder from damaging the gutter. Um, this, that there, probably one of the best things I've ever bought. It's got all the fittings that I'll need on the roof and I don't have to go jumbling through my pocket trying to find the different fittings. That and the circular saw that I showed you before is probably one of the, uh, two of the best things I've ever bought for doing solar. Um, shoes. Wear a rubber soled shoe if you're on a tin roof because uh, they do grip quite well. Um, you can use various other things like spraying belt grip on your shoes. I've even heard spraying lemonade on the roof and letting it dry makes it all nice and sticky. Um, can't say I've ever tried that one but I'll normally carry about three different pairs of shoes because different roofs have different levels of grip and sometimes different shoes work better. Um, I find something nice and flexible like these is good. Steel toe cap is just too restrictive and hard on my toes. Um, but I am a whingy, grumpy old man, so you know, you younger blokes will probably get away with it and 
be fine. Um, steep roof, you need a harness. Uh, on a roof like this, I'll wear a harness, but I'll use one with a retracting um, coil. Uh, so it's not too restrictive on me. If it's a, and I can move freely um, because it retracts as I move towards it and then it comes out as it, as I walk away from it, much like a seat belt. Um, I use that where I'm on a roof where I'm highly unlikely to slip off. If it is a steep roof and I'm struggling, then I'll wear a, a regular, uh, sorry, a harness, but use a regular rope uh, so that I can also use the rope to um, hold myself up on the roof with and just to get my balance. Um, but I'm doing this one on my own. If it was much steeper than what it is, I'd use sub subbies, subcontractors, but I'd be here on site with them as well, just making sure everything's going well uh, because I do work alone these days. So this is pretty much the limit of jobs I'd take on by myself. Um, so yeah, but so when I was um, up here last, my phone cut out, it actually overheated and I didn't realize and I was still filming and talking to myself. Uh, so I'll try and pick up where I left off. Um, I think I was talking about the harness. That's the harness, uh, sorry, that's the, um, the retractable uh, thingy bob. I'm not even sure what you call it. It escapes me. But that's what I attach, I wear a harness and I attach to that. So that goes in and out like that. Um, but if you do fall, it will lock like that. Um, and I'll use that on this roof, like I said, where it's highly unlikely that I'll slip off. Um, but if I do slip off, that'll catch me. Uh, and uh, if it was much deeper, I'd wear the, um, the uh, use the rope, like I said, to stabilize myself. Um, one thing I wanted to tell you was, uh, I was up here yesterday. Um, I've pretty much finished on the roof now. I've just come up to blow it off. Um, so all the, where I've drilled my holes here, you get all these bits of metal like that, there. So you wanna blow all them off because they will create rust spots and um, potentially um, cause the roof to prematurely rust. So make sure you blow all them off. Um, but what I wanted to say is if you're wearing shorts and you've got sunscreen on, uh, be careful not to sit on the roof. Uh, or touch the roof with your legs or your arms where you've got sunscreen. So I was up here yesterday and I did have sunscreen on. You can see these dark spots here. That's actually where I've touched the roof with sunscreen on my legs. And what will happen is if you stand on that spot, when you stand on it, you get that sunscreen on the bottom of your shoe and then you walk it around all over the roof and then before you know it you've got a roof that was uh, okay to walk on is now incredibly slippery and you can't even walk on it. It took me years to work that one out. Um, I had an apprentice that used to cover himself in sunscreen and then sit on the roof as he was doing his um, roof penetrations, the deck tights and the MC4 fit offs and then we'd walk that sunscreen uh, all over the roof and we'd come to put the panels up and couldn't stand up. Um, you can see the dark spots on this roof because it's a dark roof, but on a white roof or a tin uh, color bond roof, sorry, a zinc loom roof, you can't see. Um, like that's a zinc loom roof, that's a white roof. So you can't see where you've spread that sunscreen on the surface. And um, yeah, it took me years to work that one out, why these roofs were becoming incredibly slippery uh, the more we worked on them. So either wear long pants, or if you do wear shorts and put sunscreen on, don't let your leg legs or arms touch the roof. Um, yeah, because before you know it, you won't be able to walk on the roof. All right, so that's pretty much it up here. Um, I've finished up here now, I'm doing all the groundwork and uh, I'll be back up here with a scissor hoist where I'll put over there and I'll, I'll bring all my panels up on a scissor hoist and then walk them across the roof and lay them down and that should be me done so there you go hope that helped if you're doing solar on a tin roof 
Uh, there's a few little pointers there for you. Righto, cheers.